Every year, I try and do a little something to ruin Christmas for you, and this year is no exception. So let's welcome back our resident saint expert and noted Christmas ruiner, Elizabeth Harper. Do you have a saint you plan on ruining for us? Actually, I'm here to ruin, I, I mean, talk about Santa. We need to talk about Santa. Santa is uncontroversial, though. Everybody loves Santa. You got his beard, you got the elves, you got the sack of presents. Well, for starters, he's not who you think he is. He's been using a pseudonym for a little while now. His name is actually based on the Dutch, which is Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas, oh, you really <laughs> exposed him there. Everything sounds different in the Dutch. If we were doing this episode in Dutch, it would be Vrag un begrafenis undernemer, and you would be Lisbeth. Yeah, but Sinterklaas is based on the Middle Dutch version of his name, which is Sint Niklaus. Sint Nicolaus, Saint Nicholas, jolly old Saint Nick. This is still not blowing my mind. Yeah, but did you know he was a real Catholic saint? He was born around 270 AD. This still doesn't change his narrative that much. He's still a nice, white, northern Dutch saint with twinkly blue eyes and a red suit. Not exactly. St. Nicholas was a bishop from the country we now call Turkey. So that means his pantsuit was originally a robe, and his eye, hair, and skin color could have been kind of Mediterranean looking, or he could have looked more like this 17th century icon. Um, what are you, Mall of America? Isn't Black Santa just some newfangled alternative Santa? That Santa is more accurate than the super Europeanized version that Coca-Cola pushed in the 1930s. Hold on, this is all really nice and inclusive. Aren't we trying to ruin Christmas here? Oh, well, Santa Claus also wants to save you from sex work. Excuse me? St. Nicholas fills your stockings because he doesn't want you to have to work in a brothel. I mean, I am supportive of sex workers and I just, I wasn't, that wasn't what I was trying to, okay, tell me more. St. Nicholas's parents died when he was young and they left him a lot of money. So he would do all kinds of good deeds with it. Like he heard about this guy with three daughters who didn't have any money for their dowries. Unfortunately, in the fourth century, no dowry meant no husband, which meant no financial stability, which meant the three girls would have to take the jobs that were available to them, which was, you know, the oldest profession. So St. Nicholas took three bags of gold coins and threw them down the man's chimney at night. And the girls had hung their stockings to dry. So when they woke up, I guess you could say it was like Christmas morning. But that's why a lot of people get chocolate coins in their stocking. To save them from sex work. Yeah, aren't you glad you get to be a mortician and don't have to rely on your dowry for stability? Thanks, Santa. Ooh, but you and Santa might be enemies. Um, how is that possible? I have been so good all year. St. Nicholas was a total death denier. Now you are really ruining Christmas. So there was this inn in the forest that was owned by an evil innkeeper who happened to be pickling some meat one day. He looks up and he sees three boys wander in looking for help because they got lost in the forest. The evil innkeeper chops the boys up and throws them in the pickling barrels. Oh, I do know this story. This is where St. Nicholas shows up like three months later and resurrects the pickle barrel boys. Flat out Christmas necromancy. And that's how this prostitute saving bishop from Turkey came to be associated with kids. Ta -da. Okay, but if Santa was a real person, he had to die sometime, right? Death comes to us all. Right, Santa is dead or St. Nicholas, whatever, same person. He is so dead, you can visit Santa's grave. In the North Pole? Caitlin, what have we been talking about? Oh. St. Nicholas was buried in Turkey, but the Italians wanted his body or relics for themselves. So the city of Bari sent three ships to bring his bones back to Italy. Their team was successful, and in 1087, they came back with Santa's bones. But the Venetians also sent their own relic hunters to Turkey in 1099, and they believed that they found the real bones of St. Nicholas. So I have to go all the way to Italy to see Santa's tomb, and even then I won't know what city he's really in? Now, in 1992, yes, 1992, both cities allowed an anatomy professor to examine the bones, and he determined that they were complementary and from the same man. I guess Santa is known for being many places at one time, but still, Italy? 
Santa is everywhere. Churches gift relics and move tiny pieces of bone, or even whole arms and fingers, all the time. So you can see parts of St. Nicholas in the following locations. <laughs> Whoa, so Santa Claus isn't coming to town, he's already in town. Right. It's a Christmas miracle. Thanks, Elizabeth, for telling us about Turkish necromancer Santa. I can't really say that we ruined Santa, we just gave you a better Santa. You're welcome. Happy holidays. Brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home, and donations from viewers like you.